Culture is brought to you in part thanks to the Miriam Aaron Rowland Canadian Content Fund, helping Vermont PBS increase its commitment to Canadian and cross-border programming. I think that there's a real appetite for what we're doing here. It is a little bit different than pure comedy. It is a little bit different than a one-person show. You walk up on stage and there are 130 people watching you who just want to see you rock. Even if a story doesn't work, you feel the audience is on your side. And that's such a rare thing. This isn't supposed to be happening to me. And I haven't got a doctor, so I can't go get any advice. It is something very intimate, it is something really enjoyable where you, the audience member, gets to connect with someone who's, who's opening up about some important life event that they want to share. Yes, I'm thinking, you're getting old. Old. <laughs> old. And then the little kid in me jumps up and says, what's next? What's next? I want to know what's next. <laughs> yes, let's go. <laughs> You get such a, a wonderful collage of people. You get stand-ups, of course. She is a stand-up comedian. Storytellers who are, are, are writers. She is also now a published author. But also anyone and everyone can take part in this show. Our parents had been divorced for a long time. She'd been living alone on the swamp where we grew up. <laughs> Dating is difficult for anybody. It's more difficult when you're a 50-year-old woman on a swamp in rural Ontario. <laughs> So she did start this Lava Life account. I started Confabulation six years ago. I had become a big fan of true storytelling events, specifically The Moth. Confabulation is the only monthly true life storytelling event in Montreal. We have six storytellers a night, and stories typically are eight to ten minutes, without notes, without props, without gimmicks. She received a message from her gentleman's suitor saying, uh, I have to tell you something. I mean, legally, I have to tell you something. I murdered somebody. What? Who? Oh, uh, my wife. You still up for that coffee, or...? What makes this different, though, I don't like the competitive element at moth events. And so, finally, it was time to meet the man. And we really work hard to make sure it's a showcase of stories, not a competitive evening. And he says, you know, we should save these leftovers for Ron. Yeah, later Ron. <laughs> Why do I come? Because we're naturally prone to want to engage and listen to other people's stories. I just like the fact that it's, it's just stripped down, uh, back to basics, entertainment, which is just the good old art of storytelling. Well, I think it's the main destination spot if you want to see any kind of storytelling and you see all types of people. I don't know if you guys know a lot about triathlon. It's, uh, it's basically a sport that was invented uh, as an excuse for people with exercise addiction. This is <laughs> what it is. I love the storytellers who come onto the show. This is a city full of weird and wonderful people. We are, of course, going to have people who love telling stories. And people are swimming past each other. Some people are swimming over top of each other. It's really dangerous. I got a toe in my mouth. Um, like a complete stranger's toe in my mouth. We workshop with all of our storytellers in advance, work them through the narrative steps, what makes a good story, and trying to help the person uh, not to change their voice, but to really bring their voice out of the piece. Culture is brought to you in part thanks to the Miriam Aaron Rowland Canadian Content Fund, helping Vermont PBS increase its commitment to Canadian and cross-border programming.